Okay, so our session started with the group coming up with what to do next. You finally had put an end to the fighting in the streets and the temples, and locked down some sort of new technology for later inspection. After a quick regroup, both our party and John's party came to the conclusion that a full sweep of the city, with the help of the temple's guards, would be in order to make sure it's safe to give the all clear so that all the people that got evacuated could return to their homes and if their homes were still standing. So Constantine and his crew went one way, and you guys started going house to house starting with your main area. After finding nothing in the first building, Clark hit up the inn they stayed at, cause he was aware there were still a bunch of kids held up inside of it, and after a nice little tune on his loot, he persuaded them to all to follow him to a safer place. Most of them were orphans, and it was best to get them to one of the temples. The other four kept on looking, but split up after Annie's panther caught a scent and took off in a different direction. Alaric and Andy followed suit, while Cargath and Hal kept going house to house. After a good half hour, and about ten houses checked later, a few hidden possessed dolls were found in a closet, and were smashed into oblivion with the door by Cargath and Hal. Kerrigan, however, had found a blood trail, and after a quick insight, they thought it was Buster's. He had been kidnapped a few days earlier, and it seems he's in trouble so they backtracked and all met at the Lunara Temple. Once inside, the head priestess took charge of the kids, and after getting all their names and information, she gathered up everyone in the temple to spread a little cheer. She then gave a heartfelt speech and awarded Hal an amulet of the devout for his service to the city, but also told him to stop lollygagging around and get back to work. She could tell our party was a little worse for wear and handed out five very rare potions, that would give them the benefits of a full rest if drank. Clark stayed outside the temple with Kerrigan and had a nice, who had a nice cat nap curled around Clark. Clark also timed to get to know this panther a little bit better. Being an owlin, he's always had a somewhat scared nature towards cats, but has since had a change of heart. So he cast speak with animals and tried to get to know them. What followed was more of a fun wrestling match and chase scene whereupon Clark realized that Kerrigan was a very young panther and that he was sent to keep Annie safe and that she was pack leader. Kerrigan then took Clark's wing and brought him to Annie to show Clark to show her that Clark was now part of the pack. The rest of the session took a darker turn as once you went back to the house where the blood trail was, uh, Elric knew that there was a magical mark on the door that was part of his old life, and once the lock was picked, you all headed in. Once the cellar was found, another door picked, and they saw Buster, who was a Haragon, hanging from a meat hook, half burned, arm and ear, and tail missing, and at death's door. You also found your old pal Trix, who ambushed you. Uh, the fight was quite bloody, but uh, quite fast, and only Alaric almost died again. Also, I re rolled really badly, and Silvery Barbs made the fight much easier for you guys. Uh, and five of you against one lone little halfling was in your favor. Annie dealt the final blow, and as that happened, they noticed a tattoo flare up on Trix's neck and exploded. Most of you took the full fire damage, and a few of you luckily rolled away. Uh, and all that was left of Trix was her magic items. Once a few healing spells were tossed around, Buster was stable, and the session ended, which is where we ended and where we are picking up. So what do you guys want to do? You currently are around the smoking remains of Trix. Buster has been Did we already... cauterized. Did we already search the room and uh... or Trix? You have just picked up all of what Trix had on the ground. You have not searched the room or the rest of the house. I suppose that should be first protocol, then. I shall begin investigating the room. Okay, give me an investigation roll. Seeing what, seeing what else... What else is around? <laughs> Uh, 
Uh, five, not much. Uh, you're a little too small being two and a half feet tall. Right. I'm also going to look Clark around. Will... Yeah, Clark will do the same thing. Okay, give me investigation rules, please. <laughs> I don't see much more. <laughs> you're three feet tall. Nope. <laughs> is my roll coming through? Not oh, there it is. Okay. Nope, 13. Uh, 13 is enough to realize that this was a fairly hastily put together. It, it's actually like a pantry, uh, like a little, like a fairly good little cellar pantry that has been pretty much turned into a makeshift torture room. Uh, this was probably done quite fast, and most of these things were probably scavenged. But you don't see like no money, nothing else. Um, just whatever Trix was using on Buster. Gotcha. Yeah. And I, I don't have my notes. Was Kerrigan, do you know Kerrigan's hit points? Like, did he get hurt? I can't remember. He came in quick, uh, tried to jump and take Trix down. I believe he did take most of the fire damage and you did heal him back up. Okay. So if he's back, we can pull him back at full. I believe Hal brought him full, yes. Okay, that's what I thought. Okay, thank you. Yep. Yeah. I'm pretty sure that's what happened. And you, uh, you tell us this, right, Annie? Yes, yeah, absolutely. You... Oh, yeah. Then, yeah, then there Clark doesn't seem will... to be much in here. Just bring it up. Well, here. since this, this stuff was, um, looks like it was scavenged, Clark is wants to zoom, look at like the table or the or anything to see if there's any like maker marks or or you know property of kind of things on any of this to see where it may have come from okay give me another investigation or perception would all uh, and what's your passive investigation uh but that it's only a 12 okay I'll let you roll then No, don't see anything. You, uh, unless you uh, take a look upstairs, that's probably your next guess to see if some of this maybe came from the house. Yeah. But for the most part, this looks like just normal. Uh, oh, this would work. Oh, this will work. Stuff like that. Okay. Uh, and as a reminder, you found studded leather plus two, the cloak of displacement, which I believe Alric took. I think so. Who took yeah. the dagger of warning? Maybe Hal. I'll take that. I took the armor. Okay. Uh, so I think that's all that's left was the dagger of venom. I think you guys grabbed it, but I don't think anyone was going to... I don't think any of you guys really needed to use it. But you have it. Yeah, Clark right didn't. Off. Yeah, I, have, I haven't deleted the No, Clark yet, didn't. So I still have her. But she didn't have anything else. Okay. We just take it in the bag of holding and just have it. Beautiful. Okay. Um... Cargath is pretty much just carrying Buster. It looks like he's stable, but he is out. He has not woken up yet. So what would you guys like to do? Cargath's pretty much going to look at oh. you guys and go, I, I think he needs a healer. We do. Well, yeah, since Cargath's cool. safe bet. Um... Clark is going, can we tell, because I see two doors on the map, can we tell which one would actually lead upstairs? Oh, sorry, there, there's only one, even if there's two on the map, it was just the one you came through. Okay. Yeah. Well, Clark will, Clark's going to head out into the hallway then. Okay. Yeah, it's pretty much stairs just going up to the kitchen that you guys were at before. Okay. Well, are you guys searching the house or going straight outside? I can't. Oh, I Clark wants to look around a little bit and see. Okay. 
Uh, see what he can find. Okay. I don't remember what that green dot was for, but I'm, I think it was a bless spell on you. Could, could Alvik uh, have a look around for traps? Make sure Tricks have not left anything nasty behind. Uh, downstairs or upstairs? Uh, just in general. He... Okay. Although, um, he really looked around downstairs and things got gone off, so I assume upstairs. Yeah, okay. Uh, with you and Clark going around, I'll let each of you can roll, or one can give the help action and you can one can roll with an advantage. I'll, I'll help Clark then. Okay. Okay, so investigation, right, with advantage? Yes, yes please. God, <laughs> I seem to be stuck on the number eight. You are. Uh, <laughs> you don't hear anything. Uh, maybe having the two smallest people in the group are probably not the best to maybe look. Um, but currently, kitchen's empty. You remember seeing a lot of blood trail and quite a bit of dust. This house isn't in the best of shape since the earthquake, and the demons running around probably didn't help. Uh, the second floor kind of looks like it's going to crumble, but other than that, it's hard to tell. Um. All right. Now, from the, if I remember correctly, from the kitchen, there there goes out into like a, a, a foyer entrance yeah. kind of thing, right? Yeah, you guys were pretty much just like visiting up in a street, house by house by house. This one uh, was a blood trail that you guys followed. I will put you on the town map. Okay, because what Clark would like to do yeah. is go out into the the main hallway, the main foyer, uh, and he's going to cast a tech magic. Okay. And see if anything pops around the yeah. so, around him. You guys, if memory serves, are in this house here. Oh. Yeah. Age of Big Mac. There we go. You guys were in and around your inn. Your house is here. Um, the few of you originally started going up through these houses while everybody else was doing the rest of the town. And this is where the blood trail brought you. Uh, yeah, it took us a little off our path that we were off. looking at, yeah. Correct. Yeah. So, uh, detect magic. The only little bit of magic, you can't see it. The only little bit of magic you're going to detect in your area is the symbol that's on the side of the door, other than, like, all the items that you guys currently have on and all your magic shit. But outside is the only ping you get with the hidden symbol that only Alric can see. You'll be able to detect it, but not see it. So would I know it? it's something Al Alric might know, or is it just... Uh, he would have uh, told you about it. I, I think he told you about it when you guys first went in. Because this is the fourth one I think you've seen. Okay, okay. Yeah. Similar to the ones we got in the silver. Yes, but this is something okay. he's never seen before other than here. This is something new since he left. But this one was pointing in the end of the house, so... Yeah. There's nothing other, anything magical that you can tell inside the house. Okay, so um, I'll, it's uh, what ten ten minutes. So I'll keep it running as we as we're okay. walking around. Okay. Um, are you staying in the house, or do you guys want to head some head somewhere else? Clark has a short memory and totally forgot what the plan actually was. Uh, you were <laughs> in the process of doing the Lunara Temple and the Terra Temple area. Clearing houses to give the all clear, but that's when you found Buster. And we were meeting back at the temple, right? You were going to go back to the temple from here, correct? Yes. Okay. 
Yeah. Well, that it would also make sense to take Buster back to the temple anyway. Okay. So. Beautiful. Yeah. yeah. Sounds good. All right. Um, as soon as you guys all come outside, uh, what's everyone's passives? Perception, sorry. As to what? Perception. Perception? Yep. Ten. Eighteen. I... Eighteen. Fifteen. Fifteen. Somehow. Okay. For an owl with good sight, my perception sucks. <laughs> uh, <let's see. laughs> All right. Um, any, you see it first. Um, actually, it's. I think Kerrigan will probably see it or smell it first. Um, out of the corner. Coming from the in direction, so down here, you're going to see an even larger panther prowling the streets than Kerrigan. This one's quite, you'd say, giant size. And it's just, it's pretty much found a blood trail and it is coming your way. And you see Kerrigan take off after it quite quickly. Not not growling, just pretty much a, ooh, hi, and just go. Okay, like, like friendly, like I want to play, or like hackles raised, there's this big thing I want to chase? Uh, more of a, oh, I know that person. Oh, interesting. Okay, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to run after him, too. Go for it. Um, eventually, you will see the panther turn back into... The elf, the druid that you guys have met, who last time was a water elemental. Arch druid Elrid. And he's just going to look at everybody and go, ah, I had a good nap. I uh, was in the middle of helping out and my nose caught a familiar scent. You guys okay? Hi, Kerrigan. Nice to see you again. You can see he's like Kagan's like almost giving him a hug. None the worse for wear considering what we were just uh went through. Mm. I see your did he he didn't see Buster, no. Um is that guy okay? I uh Hmm. I can do something to help him. Uh Kargath? Pleasure to see you again. Kargath's just going to nod. Uh, you guys would remember, uh, he's the one who brought Kargath to Marzel. Um, well, you guys look like you've been through something. You, you all okay? You guys are pretty much cut up, I think, still quite a bit. How's a little damaged. Kargath's quite damaged. How are you guys looking? I don't think I got hit at all. <laughs> no, you didn't. You were in the back. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I was outside for most of it, yeah. <laughs> you were. Yeah. I'm still Alex probably covered in boot. Alex probably covered in bumps and scrapes. Yeah. Uh, he's just going to look at everybody and go, Come with me. I'll, I'll, I'll fix you guys up. Uh, I think I can help. This, uh... He's looking at Buster and going, He a friend? He, he, was yeah. a, he, he was a member of our party at one point, so you could say that. Uh, He's definitely had it the worst out of us. Sort of here. Well. Uh, I'm told I have you. He's looking at Clark. Thanks to get uh, the kids out. Thank you. Appreciate that. Uh, I was going to do that when I woke mm. up, uh, but apparently he did that first. So, come with me. Uh, he's going to pretty much take you back to the inn. Uh, and lay... You're going to see him put Buster in a chair. He's going to look at everybody first. Put his hands together. Tell you all to group up. And he's going to do a... Uh, I think it's a Aura of Vitality. Uh, over the next minute, everybody is going to be getting about 8d6 worth of healing every 6 seconds. So you can put yourself to full. 
choice of a level 20 druid. Goes pretty quick. Um, pretty much like little tiny vines and leaves just come out of the ground in the inn. Start covering you guys up and just pretty much like covering you in like aloe and a whole bunch of stuff. And you feel quite well, quite quickly. And then you, you hear Clark. Yeah. You hear Clark doing a little chuckle as the vines kind of tickle under his feathers. Uh, then he's going to walk over to Buster and put his hands on Buster. And it's going to take a while. Uh, but he just Clark will, uh, how long is this uh, going to be? Well, uh, it takes him about a minute. And you just see almost like the same vines and leaves that healed you just start covering his tail, his burns, pretty much putting him in a cocoon for a bit. And then he's just going to say, I haven't had to do that in a long time. I think you'll be fine. He pretty much cast Regenerate on him. <laughs> Do we have time to take a short rest while we're here, in addition to the healing we get? If you would like to take an hour, by all means, yes. I'm not going to say no. Everybody good with hanging out in the inn for an hour? Uh, I could rest. Yeah. I could use some spell slots. <laughs> okay. I think you're the only one who gets things back with a short rest. No, I, I, I get key. Oh, you get key points. Right, right, right. I don't think uh, Hal gets anything. I'll give him a short rest. Um, put him back to full health. Alright, perfect. Okay. Um, right. Uh, during that time, uh, the barkeep that is there will bring you guys any liquid or food, anything, all that fun stuff. So, um... Over the next hour, what would you guys like to do, or are you just going to sit back? Eat, rest, let Kerrigan get some food. Okay. And that will work. Well, regenerate takes an hour. And after an hour, um, all the vines and leaves leave your buddy Buster. And he's got his tail back. He's got his ear back. He's got his arm back. He's still not awake, though. Um, he is doing a lot better. Uh, you're going to see that he's gone through quite an ordeal and even that much healing and regenerating. Still going to be a while before he's awake. Um, I'm currently at the hospital. Oh. So, I will be out for the day. No, the baby's coming home today. Oh, right. That's tough. I completely, yeah, <laughs> I completely gap today was Friday. Okay, no butter from, no worries, dude. How's baby doing? Baby's good. Yeah? Okay, good. Baby's healthy. Baby's coming home. Okay. Yay! Well, on Thanks, guys. Note, yeah, on a good note, Buster has just been regenerated of all his limbs. Well, that's not fun. I know. <laughs> <laughs> but when you have a level 20 druid right in your pocket, these things happen. Why not? Yeah. Yeah. Okay, bud. Uh, yeah. Yes, guys. Enjoy. Yeah. Good luck. I forgot it was baby day for him to come home. Right, right, right. All right. I will be playing hell. So, uh, over the hour... Annie, you are going to find from this lovely druid that he's the one who is Kerrigan's handler. No. Nope. He's trained Kerrigan. He grew up with Kerrigan. He was there when Kerrigan was born. I'm just going to look back and forth between both of them. Yeah, it's pretty much... Uh, uh, like normal, like um, master and pet. Yeah. Wow. So thank, thank you, I guess, for bringing uh, him to me or, I, you know, let, 
I honestly didn't know he was out. Uh, Archmage, I believe, uh, was it Chester or Archmage Orchard? Like, I think it was Chester that gave him to you. Yeah. Yeah. I said, no, oh, I, uh, no, I honestly didn't know he was here. Don't I hope you him. don't mind. I'm going to no. ruffle Kerrigan's ears. He's, he's been he's, invaluable uh, and he's great. Great guy to have around. Most rum rambunctious of the pack, so I'm happy he's doing good. He seems to be extremely loyal as well. Mm. He even gets along with our Alan friend over here. Well, Clark just kind of waves his wing. A Kent. <laughs> Pleasure. I know your parents well. Uh, he's also going to look over at Alaric and go, I believe your boon should be ready soon. I want to give him a, a weird look. I'm, I'm confused. I don't, I don't know if he's part of that organization. You don't. You don't. But he's yeah, so I'm looking confused. Hmm. He's just going to... That's all he's telling you. Well, you guys have been through a lot. Um... And you're going to notice as soon as like an hour is done, um, your Goliath friend, the other one from the temple, Wolf Hunter, is going to appear through the door and find you guys hovered around, well, everyone, and he's just going to go, oh, hey, everybody, uh, everything good on your end? Uh, I think we've done the sweep of the city. We're good to give an all clear. Is there anything you guys need done first? <laughs> John tells me you have a, not a small problem, but a large problem to deal with. You could say that. Well, um, I'm told to tell you guys to get that done without his exact words were too much destruction and make sure nobody sees it. I don't want to know what it is. But you guys have been great help. I still have lots of things to do. So if you could get that done, I'll ignore it. Uh, yes, no? I'm hoping. Just going to nod. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Right. Well, John should be here shortly. Um, usually I don't like to do things without knowing what's going on, but it's one of those days. Uh, you will be glad to know that I do have a few good people watching over what you found. Right. He's going to nod to the druid and just go right. And leave. <laughs> Ellered is just going to look at you guys and go, you have a problem? Big problem? What can mm. I problem? I'm good at fixing problems. You have or the ability of... to make something very big, very small. Uh, yes? How big? House? A city, a city block kind of big? So, objects. Uh, well, not really an object. Right. What do you mean? And Clark, Clark kind of looks concernedly at the other party members like, should we tell him? He yeah, doesn't know a lot. He just came to help, and he was putting out most of the fires before he fell asleep. I think so. Here, well, guys. hypothetically. Yep, I like hypoth hypothetical. They're my favorite. If you were to try and remove a gas how, how would you describe it? Large 
building-sized turtle from the city. I like you. How would you do it? He's literally just going to close his eyes and go, Right. Okay. I suspect I know what you're talking about. And I'm assuming the former owner is no longer here. That would be correct. Do you know if her mother knows? Do you she, know who her mother is? is she she had a she had family? Uh, we, we know we know a relative is aware. Uh, Whitney knows who her mother is. <laughs> yeah. Yep. Uh, yeah, you guys would remember hearing the scream as soon as you killed Endelin of uh, Abigail Arcane, the Hag of Marzell. I, th I thought she was his sister. Mother. Ah. Endelin was the daughter. He was just trying to, like, play it off, you know? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> He's just going to look at you guys and go, okay, it didn't. It's a weird family. Uh, they haven't spoken in a long time. We didn't even know where she was located. This is putting a few things together. Okay. Um, yes. I can. Uh, right. Going home is going to be a challenge now. Right. Okay. Let's just do it. Hey, follow me, and we'll head back to... Let's leave your buddy here for a bit. Um, Cargath will just put up his hand and go, I'll, I'll, I'll watch Buster. That's good. Sounds good. All right. So, on the map itself, you guys are not too far away. Um, as soon as you guys come outside, you see just John strolling towards your house pretty much where he was going to be there waiting for you guys he's going to just wave you guys over and give you guys the thumb up and go all good uh everything we have found so far has been actually quite good um temple guards we had a few more show up from a few of the other temples we're doing quite well um we'd like to do all the be all clear i've grudgingly told a few uh, of the uh, high priestesses and priests about your problem. So let's try and do this with minimal damage if possible. He's just going to look well, at the... what... Yeah, he's going to look at the druid. That's what we hope he will help with. And I'll point towards uh, the druid. Well, in all your heads... You're going to hear, oh, it's time, is it? Okay. Now, I haven't moved in quite a while, and I still have about six houses on top of me. This is going to be, I'll go as slow as I can, but I do need to come out before... I'm assuming you're going to polymorph me. That's what we hope to do. Well, before you do that, there's a prisoner upstairs you might want to deal with. Um. Did we leave someone in the house? Did someone get into the house? Oh, um, no. Uh, Endolin's had a couple on hand. Um, just, just go upstairs. You, you, I'll tell you where to look. All right, Clark will head inside and go upstairs. Yeah, <laughs> locking eyes with the rest of the party. They've been here the whole time and take off running. <laughs> so, when you guys are inside your house, that is 
currently a toy shop. You're going to remember where you guys put the mirror. You guys laid Zatanna down to sleep in the bedroom. In the bedroom, you guys haven't been through there yet because it was John who put her there. On the wall near the window is a very, very large golden mirror that your house is telling you to go look at. Does anyone here speak Sylvan? Sylvan? I do. I do, I Sylvan. do as well. Okay. On the mirror, you will see an image. Kind of looks like a portrait than a mirror. So it was prob it's really, really hard to tell that it's a mirror other than the actual shape looks exactly like what a mirror would be but it's got an image of something like an image of someone i will show you a picture of what you see in that mirror once i find it i still haven't found what i'm looking for in the mirror is a female, gray hair, tattoos, no idea what it is. Uh, give me all history rolls, please. Oh, Alfred put the net. Not 20. <laughs> Somewhere, Better with my history than my observation. <laughs> somewhere along the way, I need a 20 year older. Over. Uh, Alric, oh. maybe you read in a book. Maybe. Then you, you, you click in the back of your head. You've read about this in your grandmother's journal. The image you're seeing in front of you is a race called the Air Genasi. Ancient race has never been seen or heard of in a long time. Far before your ancestors were on the moon, or even way before they were on the planet of Lunara. And at the bottom corner, you see the word Valenthar. It's in Sylvan. And you know that it's to meaning is sealed reflection. Oh! Oh, what's it? I'd say, um, it's a Janassi. A what? I think. Did you you know, the, the grey hair, yeah. They're not quite the kind of pale skin. I swear the, I, I I'm going to look because I'm going to not quite sure themselves rant of <laughs> describing them. Because yep. I don't know how I would describe it, so it would be a... Yeah. yeah. Um, in your grandmother's journal, you would remember probably, like, one quick paragraph of maybe an obscure move that was taught to one of her ancestors by someone who was an air genasi. In the the phrase sealed reflection, uh, Valenthar is a command word. Oh, I thought that was the name. Nope. The sealed reflection, that's pretty much like um, you'd be able to give me a quick arcana. We'll, we'll do it that way. Even Hal and Annie, too. And, uh, Clark. Yeah, so I can read that word, too. So I would know what that means. Okay. Yeah. You would know what it means, yes. And so we could tell the others, so it's all... Yeah. Uh, common knowledge. Clark, to you, that is a command word. Uh, that would trigger 
the mirror. And would I know exactly what the mirror would do when that trigger w w was said, or...? Not unless you identify the mirror first. Oh. <laughs> yeah. I don't Can know. I start ritual casting detect magic? Yeah, uh, John doesn't have detect... Uh, sorry, uh, he's got detect magic, he doesn't have identify. And the druid... So I I suppose it's been longer than ten minutes, right? Mm -hmm. Since okay. okay, so mine would have. Uh... Okay, then I can do identify. Okay, yeah, you guys took an hour. Uh, yeah, the druid can't do it. Oh, that's right. Either. Yeah, I think Annie is the only one who can do identify and click. So over the so, next. Dark, if you've got to take magic, I'll do identify. Okay. Um, let me bring it up here. So your detect magic will do that first. Comes up with a little bit of transmutation and abjuration. The identify tells you that this is a mirror of life trapping. When the command word is said, it will activate the mirror and anyone who looks in it, if they don't fail pass their save, will become trapped in it f until either the mirror is broken or the person's name is said. It is pretty much an extra dimensional cell that who's ever trapped inside doesn't need to eat, drink, or sleep, and they're there forever until they are released. I'm going to relay that to the party. So it sounds like if we if we break it, then they can come out unless we know their name. Does anybody know who this is? None of you know who that is. All right. Step back. <laughs> and Clark is going to... Um, Take his uh, sword and knowing that it, he sees the reflection of someone that isn't in the room and assumes that that person is trapped, um, we'll try and smash. Okay. Give me an attack roll. To let them out. All right. I guess uh, attack want... roll. Yep. I guess you don't want to keep okay. them here for yourselves. Okay. No. <laughs> right. I mean, I, I do, but how on earth are we going to get them out of the wise? There's ways. Well, just start guessing yeah. names. 14. Uh, yeah, AC of an 11. Roll me damage. Damage. Smash. Damage is uh, 10 is, piercing. Is the exact number you needed. <laughs> this thing shatters. And the image from the mirror falls to the floor. No equipment, just some simple clothing. So you can immediately, you start breathing again. One minute you were looking at this mirror, you don't remember anything else other than now you're outside of it. You're on the ground, surrounded by, you don't know. Give me a perception check. If you just hit the red. Uh, a nine. Yeah, you're, you're, not too sure what's going on. Um, and anything you currently have in your inventory, you can delete for me. You can keep your backpack because you'll eventually find that and trying to fill a backpack up is a pain in the ass. But all your regular equipment, you can delete. No money, no nothing. 
and you find yourself on a floor, wooden, surrounded by these guys. Clark will fly over. Are, are, are you okay? Where, where at? What the hell's? I was, I was just looking in the mirror, and who are you, and, and where am I? My name is is Clark. Um, and you happen to be in our our house. You must have been uh, trapped by the previous <clears throat> the previous owner of this here place. Huh. Well, I don't remember anything. I don't know how I'm here, how long I've been here, but... I'm not overly excited about this. What's going on? It's uh, a little bit of a, a long story. But to, suffice it to say that... Uh, the previous owner of this uh, place is no longer, and hopefully, we can figure out because we, and I gesture to the rest of the party, uh, recently took over this place, so we're still finding out stuff. About it as well. So, this previous owner, who were they, and why did you steal their house? Well, we didn't necessarily steal the house. Um, well, you did you know who they were, considering that it seems like you were in their house before we were? You can give me a history roll once they tell you that name. I assume you guys are going to tell her it's Endel and Moongrave, but just in case you you actually forgot. Yeah. <laughs> I, I did forget the name. <laughs> <laughs> give me a history roll. Uh, nope. Me, that my name means nothing. Uh, yeah. I, I don't know. I don't know where I am, where I'm from, who this Kindlin whatever star church whatever. I don't know. I don't know anything. I just was here and then I wasn't here, but now I'm here. And now you're here and I don't know anything. And then, like, I've got nothing. I don't know where all my stuff is, but, uh... How are you not... currently feeling? Are you In angry? General, I mean, I'm confused. Mm -hmm. I'm just more curious. And that's about you know. all I got. Okay. I just wasn't too sure if you felt like raging in the situation. Well, yeah, you know, I am. I'm a little bit angry about about this because I was, I was, I, I don't know. I, you know, whatever. Yeah, she just, all of a sudden, she's like, <laughs> and. Okay. Roll me a D100, please. Oh, boy. I said some wild magic going on. Yeah. <laughs> That'll be fine. So the normal one is just a D8. I found one with 100 different options. 
89. Let's see what happens at an 89. Oh, okay. You see this air genasi that you now know what they are. You don't know their names. Split into two different people. And for the duration of your rage, it counts as the same creature, except it has two bodies. So if you ever, when you rage again, are in, and are in battle, you basically can give yourself flanking. All right. As, and, also and I think as this, as this this happens, Clark, Clark is going to run towards and 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 kind of like hide behind Kerrigan because that just scared the hell out of him. And six seconds later, goes back to one body. Yeah, and he's gonna back up too. Never seen anything like this before. But she's gonna back up, but also just kind of stare, like fascinated. This is probably the first time this has ever happened to you, also. Well, that was interesting. I don't know why that happened, but I ain't mad at it, to be honest with you. Gotta admit, I'm you know, I just realized. We we haven't gotten we set you free from this mirror and I haven't gotten your name. What is your name? Uh you do remember that. <laughs> okay. Yep. Uh my name is Thora. What's your name? Um Clark. Hello, Clark. Uh, and not and... knowing Go ahead. No, I was just going to say, and not knowing if she's wounded or not, or they are wounded or not, Clark's going to just uh, cast a quick, uh, uh, a, uh, 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 cure wounds? A, qu a quick cure wound. Yeah, I, the, the scene, the cue got me messed up. <laughs> mm -hmm. For six, just in case. Yeah, you're still full health anyway, so probably gives you like a little energy boost, pretty much. Ooh, I like that. that. <laughs> just to just to show Thor, you know, we I that Clark means no harm and, and wants to help. Yeah, from the corner, you're gonna hear John just go, <laughs> "I like her." Hey, I like that guy too. <laughs> the only normal looking one is him as a human. You recognize humans. The other ones in the room, you have no idea what they are. Um, so can everybody explain to me who you are and what you're doing here and what you do in life? John's gonna put his hand up and go, I kill people. And, um, well, I fix people, I help people, and I try to banish and get rid of any demonic presence that I can find. And undead. Mostly demon. Cool. Seeing John being fine talking to her, and mm -hmm. basically John's like Oni's role model. <laughs> it's pretty much any enemy oh. of Endolins is a friend of mine. Yeah, yeah, okay. Um my my name's Ani. This is this is Kerrigan. Rub Kerrigan behind the ears. Um Who's a Panther? Yeah, I kinda wanna do the same this the same thing and try to make any any demon presence stop if I can, but I I'm, I'm still just a little confused about how how you got here. I'm, but it seems like you are too, but I've never seen any magic like that before. That was that was awesome. Can you do it again? You do know what a demon is. It's something you've probably heard about, never really seen, but you know they exist. Uh, so, Arnie, yeah, I don't. I guess I can do that again, but let's put that on the back burner for a second because um, 
demons? Like, I know what a demon is, but why do y'all keep talking about them? Uh, well, they, they, they recently wrecked the... I don't know if you've cut it the city, but the the town that we're in. Sorry if I get down here. I, I'm Alric. Describe yeah, what they, you look like and how tall you I, are. <laughs> Alric, Alric is a, 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 a brownie. He's a relative of a goblin, but a less feral looking. He stands about two feet tall. Tiny, tiny person. Well, aren't you just the cutest little thing? I take huge offense to that. I mean, you are hideous and small. Thank you very much. You, you're welcome. It's, so and, and Clark, Clark is actually going to... Uh, uh, kind of peer underneath the Kerrigan's belly as she's standing there. And, and what you see with Clark is is basically a, a barn owl. Owling. Um, so he's got, you know, the white face, the big dark eyes. Um, and... You'll see him pull out a, a lyre and start playing and um you know, I, I I sing and, and he's so he's still a little bit scared after the after the split. So he's he's kinda kinda being a little timid right now. <laughs> uh so you you're an owl. But you sing a song. Can you sing any song? You got any any good repertoire? Um, yeah. And <laughs> as he as he goes to sing, still being scared, you hear him go, "I get it, it, no," and he'll run back under care again and hide again. <laughs> Uh, you got a little stage fright, huh? It's all right. Maybe one of these days you can sing me a song. Maybe you can write me a song or write a song about me or I don't know, something. But, I mean, if, if you do songs, then that, yeah, I'd, I'd like to hear one. That seems to be what you do. Yeah. I, I maybe. All right, well. We'll revisit that in the future. I'm trying to find the image of the outfit that you're in that I made for you, and I can't find it. It's here somewhere. Yeah, anyway. Um, and who else is there? Oh, Hal, um, the normal looking one, another normal one looking one who's a, another human, puts his hand up and just goes, Hal, I'm, uh, I'm from here. Um, I've just recently met these guys and we've been, uh, well, um, our city got a little destroyed. Uh, a bunch of demons running around, a bunch of demonic dolls running around, some cultists running around. And we finally put a stop to it. Um, the building we are currently in, we are going to be moving. Yes. And we were told to uh, deal with a prisoner first, which was how we found you. But we are kind of in a hurry. If you guys want to come outside, we could probably get this done this part may be done first and then we'll get to know our new friend more a prisoner well that's what the house told us you were the house, the house is talking to you uh, in your head you hear hi oh I don't like that much 
Yeah, most people don't. So, you haven't heard the house. I, I still don't understand how you... Do you remember looking in a mirror? I don't remember anything. I just know... Here I am. And my name is Thor. It was before okay. my time with Endelin, so I don't know either. I'm sorry. Well, you're quite unhelpful there, Mr. House. Oh, well, I'm good at lots so, of things, trust me. So perhaps you looked in the mirror before the mirror was brought into the house? Okay, that makes me feel a little bit better. Okay. You would know that your house and Endelin have been together for quite a while. But, um, if you guys want to step outside, I will move you guys back. I'll give you a view of downstairs, because now you're walking through downstairs. It pretty much looks like they're in a toy shop. Lots of mirrors, lots of weird... Most of these are like marionettes, carionettes, so like porcelain dolls. It's a creepy spot. And this is inside the house? Yeah. Yeah, this is the main floor. It's currently a two-story. Well, what the hell kind of house is this? Who lives in the creepy toy store? Uh, the creepy previous owner. Yeah. Um, in your heads, you're also going to hear, you might want to take the uh, mirrors outside with you. Just in case they fall over. Hal's just going to start picking one up. <laughs> Alright. You guys, I think, have three now? One to there, and the two. So, yeah. So eventually you guys pull the three large mirrors outside. And he tells you to back up a little. So eventually you're going to see the house itself disappear completely. Um, a couple, I'll move you back over to the regular map here. So the house that's currently on him. It disappears. The toy shop's gone. And it looks like part of the alleyway, part of the main little area where you guys currently are, fades. A lot of the area around here looks like it was an illusion of some sort. Your druid friend, Ulrid, is pretty much just ready for whatever happens. And then you eventually... Give me deck saves, please, as your house finally emerges after about 850 years of having this town built on top of them. Okay. So, anyone under a 13 takes 16 points of ow. fall damage. Ow, ow, ow. <laughs> Half for uh, 13 and over. Uh, Kerrigan has pretty good reflexes. I'll let him do with advantage. Okay, I was going to say Kerrigan's dead. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> um, and Clark, as soon as you started to feel you were falling, you could have just started to fly. Kerrigan's well, dead. <laughs> at eight? Yeah, I, di oh. I didn't declare that, so I'll take okay. I'll take it. All right. um, we'll say Kerrigan is at uh, just like, he got a little knock knock knocked out. Um, <laughs> okay. Yeah. Thank you. Pretty much a, oops. 
Sorry. Um, whoever fell, you guys are like in another part of the sewer that collapsed uh, as your dragon turtle finally emerges. And almost immediately, as soon as you guys fall, Eladrid pretty much polymorphs your giant um, dragon turtle house into a tiny little turtle. And you see it just sitting at the bottom of a sewer where turtles should be. And immediately just goes, oh, shit, and just heals Kerrigan to full. Sorry, little buddy. I didn't see you there. My bad. He's just going to go over and make sure that character is okay before he checks on the rest of you. So the the right. is the house on the same level as as I am since I'm down in the sewers. Yeah. Currently you would have flown so yeah, you you would have flown down pretty much right where you guys lowered yourself and Annie noticed that one of the walls was magical and could feel where one of his legs were. That's pretty much where he got shrunk down to. But you're going to notice like four or five other houses just immediately collapsed into the sewer and the sewer itself pretty much collapsed. This was quite an ordeal. He was holding up a lot of the city block. And it takes a good time Did he get... for the dust to settle. Did he get buried under the under the houses that collapsed no. or no. He he was fine. He pretty much like he was the center of it. So like most things are like on a downward slope and he's just kind of in the middle. And he's a tiny little painter painted turtle currently. Okay. So who who else is down here with me? Uh Kerrigan's down there. Um and I believe Thora is down there. I did not roll for Hal. I will do a deck save for Hal. John can cast fly on himself. Oh, sorry. Uh, Hal can levitate, so they're both fine. Yeah. So pretty much Thora and Kerrigan. And the Druid, because he came down to heal Kerrigan. Okay, so Clark is going to... Um, Would you like the honor go to over... get him to the water? Yeah. Clark is going to go over and pick up this, this uh, painted turtle. Mm -hmm. And you guys will be able to find your a way out of here, correct? And he'll look at everybody else. I was going to start loading some rope down for them. Okay. So there's no guarantee the route we took still intact. Yeah. True. All right. If these guys can get out, Clark is going to grab the turtle and basically uh, put it in his uh, his backpack and fly okay. to the water. Right. In, in your head, it's it's more of a uh, uh, okay. He didn't want to go in the backpack. <laughs> Well, I can't. <laughs> but he, you got Clark. He, he will actually. Clark will actually respond. I can't fly with you in my wings. Fine, I meant your feet. That's fine. Just, just throw me in the water somewhere. That's all I need. And so oh. Clark will basically, uh, straight from here to there. Okay, straight out. Okay. Straight out. I hope you're okay with salt water. That's where I should be. While he's doing that, what's the rest of you guys doing? Uh, and what is Thora's reaction to seeing a massive... Looks like a dragon head on the back of a turtle and then immediately get shrunk into a smaller one. What's her reaction to first waking up in what was on top of that being and now in the middle of a sewer covered in shit. Did I take too many mushrooms on my last experience? Because I'm pretty sure that 
um, I I wasn't in a turtle house before, and now I'm in a turtle house. And anyway, I don't know. I don't know what's going on. That's true. I, I, These I'm guys don't need like, it. Don't worry. Uh, yeah, I'm I'm confused and a little bit angry. Mm -hmm. And uh, yeah, is this like a bad trip or something? Cause, cause I don't think houses are supposed to be turtles, and then houses aren't supposed to get a little, and I'm not supposed to fall down. So I don't like this. <laughs> Perfect. All right. Well, Clark, as soon as you drop your house into the water, it doesn't take too long before you see floating just right above you, Ellerid. And he's just pretty much looking into the water going, any minute, any minute. Uh, I think he's out far enough. And he ends the spell. And I will move you over to the back of the dragon turtle. Hey, how do I read erase that line, though? No, uh, it's not going to be there. That's okay. So <laughs> he vaguely just turns back into himself. And I don't need you to make you make your roll. This is the first time in a long time he's been clean. So you see a whole bunch of dust and dirt come off this thing. And eventually the legs pop out. And the head pops out. And this thing's massive. Bigger than you thought. Uh, he's like roughly 60 feet across. A good 80 feet long just for the shell. Uh, he probably stands a good maybe three stories tall. Maybe a little bit more. And in your head, he's just going to say, oh, This is so much better. You guys are great tenants so far. I'm glad I kept you. And you know how when, like, humpback whales start to play and beach themselves? This thing's having a ball right now. Um, so much that every time he splashes, at least a good 10-foot wave's coming towards the city walls. I will, will be careful there, big guy. We've already done enough damage to the city. Um, oh, right. Um, sorry, I got a little excited. Um, well, let us let us gather everyone else. We'll try to get out further hmm. away from the city. Hmm. And then you can have some fun. Right. Um, he's immediately going to crawl over. I'll put the map up again for a sec. And you're going to see him come over from where you are over here. He's going to come and put himself over in this corner. It takes him a few minutes because he's big, but he doesn't go that quick. And then you're going to see on the back of him, he's going to transform. So you just see a shell and then a lighthouse appears. Uh, I will, I will send message to, uh, I guess Annie, uh, and let them know uh, to come to the corner of the bay near Vox Temple. Okay. As that right. is where our house is. <laughs> Right, everybody. It looks like the house 
House moved. I think we're good to go now outside the walls near Vox. Near the Vox Temple. Head that way. So Drew is just going to give you a quick little, well, that was something. Uh, and then immediately go back to where the house was. Turn into an earth elemental this time and start rebuilding it. And as he's as he's uh, going back, he he Clark will message. Thank you for all your help. Anytime. Um, yeah, that was fun. I forgot I still had all that animated fire on here that I can get rid of. Whoops, wrong button. There we go. So. John's going to look at everybody and go, well, that went better than I thought. Whew. Well, now, what else would you guys like to do? Does anybody have, like, a weapon or something that I might be able to borrow? Uh, also, do you mind if I follow you? Because I have no idea where the hell I am. But, um, I, I'm, I don't know where my stuff is, because I was in a mirror, apparently, so, you know. As far as I'm concerned, you've been a longer resident of that house than we have. So you might as well stick with it. As for following others, well, that's, that's up to you. What uh, what kind of weapons uh, can you use? Oh, you know, like um, I I like big, heavy things that hurt people, but also like little skinny things that like stabby stabby people that also hurt people. <laughs> but I like things that hurt people. If you got those, also, I mean, well, I, I wouldn't mind something that like projectile something like a long thin arrow or something I, I do that too oh it's not I a have weapon a... but I have a crowbar I have it I actually have a uh, rapier if that will uh, suit you, you don't that you may use I, I yeah mighty, mighty obliged if you uh, would let me borrow that well that's, my, that's and... much better <laughs> Uh, then I hand over, I hand over the rapier. Okay. Uh, Hal um. says, uh, "Got Trix's dagger." That's what I was going to suggest. The dagger of venom. Yeah. I didn't know who had it. Uh, you picked it up, but I think Hal picked it up. But it's not in his character sheet. He, I know he took the dagger of warning because he's actually attuned to it already. Um, but I don't know who grabbed the dagger of venom. Not Hal just picked it up. I think so. Uh, I'll just say Hal will toss you a very, very shiny dagger. And it's called the Dagger of Venom. It's in D&D Beyond, so if you just search Dagger of Venom, you can add that to your character sheet, too. And is it just a standard rapier that you had there, Clark? Yes. Okay. Yes, no, just your no, standard okay. run-of-the-mill pointy thing sword rapier thing all right i got something else for her in a bit so she will get some stuff okay i want to just give how a look for, for tossing a knife for, for someone because that's um an odd thing to do yeah <laughs> yeah hal also wouldn't really know that um this dagger's quite special but that's fine uh, it's in a sheath that's fine uh, it's already used the charge for the day anyway. Uh, it is a very nice dagger. You, and Unless one of these guys tells you it's magical, to you it's just a shiny dagger. But you do see a hidden spot in the pommel that looks like if you click it, 
it would coat the dagger in something at some point. This this dagger is quite nice. I'm going to name it Mr. Shiny. Well, yeah, don't don't cut yourself with it. It leaves a bit of a leaves a bit behind. Duly noted. I appreciate you. And do you uh, need any, uh, or would you like any armor as well? Like, do you have just some plain leather that will get you going? Would it fit her? Maybe a little small. <laughs> <laughs> I am a little big. Uh, yeah, that's true. I mean, okay. I, I'm fit, but tall. Mm. You know. So. Yeah, so I don't think that would work. Well, I mean, we could make it special, but I, I think I'll, I'll just wait on that, but I appreciate the offer. Well, there might still be a tailor somewhere here, yeah, and we're just still mostly ruined city. <laughs> Um, yeah, you would remember that the tailor shop is literally next to your in the inn that you guys first stayed at, uh, and it was somewhat hastily abandoned, but there was still stuff in it. The, the back door, I believe, was unlocked. Uh, eventually, um, the druid you would have noticed went back to the inn to check on Cargath and Buster. Um, John's just going to look at everybody and go, well, I think, uh, first we should need to drink and then eat and figure out our plan from here. Is that good with you guys? Sounds smart. I honestly can't remember the last time I had anything to eat and drink, so I, well, I should not want to be doing that. Then I'm paying. And uh, I think I can tell everyone to get the all clear. I think we're good. Uh, I'll just make the guards do another sweep. They, it'll get them something to do. Well, where do you guys want to have our talk? Actually, you know what? Let's go to my end. I need to grab all my shit there anyway. You guys should remember that John's Inn's just like on the outside of town in the uh, little, uh, pretty much where all the ships get unloaded. So I think uh, all of us here are going to be probably leaving, I would assume, quite quickly. Uh, I don't know about you guys, but we did our job. I don't want to have to help rebuild, do you? It's not our job. All right. So you guys eventually make your way to John, the inn John is staying at. See if I can remember what the name is. So you guys were at. This been okay. Did I get a ten minute break? I need to for a second. Is, yeah, this was where I was going to do our break anyway. So. You guys get Thanks. back to his inn, and yeah, we will take our 10-minute break. I actually don't have a map for that one, but that's fine. Uh, you will notice the last time you were here um, was probably the last time he's been here. Um, this room was full of pictures, notes, red strings pointing a whole bunch of places. This is the last time you were here. You figured out how to find him, and this is where you met Hal. So... Uh, I don't have Hal here, so he's just going to look around and go, ha, ah, memories. That was, to you guys, I think it's been, what are we on, day two? Still? Technically, you guys yes. really haven't had a long rest in a while. Uh, you took over the temple in the morning. You're probably hitting about noonish. No, it'd be past noon. You took an hour. With the fight, turtle, you're getting close to dinner. And this is, I think, technically the first night since you saved Hal. First or second? Sorry, since you saved John. Yeah, we have not had a long rest in quite <laughs> some time. A, it's been a long two days for you guys. 
Um, yeah, you've had a lot of short rests, uh, but I don't think you've had a long rest in a while, but you did get the potion that pretty much gave you a long rest. Whoever used it, I can't remember. Um, did that include spell slots? I think or just it no, help? It no, it, With uh, the potion? The potion would have uh, complete full rest, so spell slots too. Oh! Oh, no, what no. about items? I feel like we asked, asked at the time, because I have items that only regenerate once a day. The item? No. This is just for the body, for everything, not magical items. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Th then you went and fought, so you would have used your spell slots during the fight with tricks. Yeah. Yeah. But that's okay. I'm not Which the short up. rest just got back. Correct. For you. Yeah. Joys of a Warlock. Okay. Um, John's pretty much just immediately packing. Um, doesn't have, uh, Sargon's not here, Mento's not here, Satana's not here. It looks like they're still doing something else. It's just John. Uh, the Druid, you, uh, he went back to the inn. Um, but Kargath is with you. I'll put him with you. Um, so John's pretty much just shoving things into what you guys know is a bag of holding, because you have one too. Um, he's just going to point to a, uh, the sofa and tell you guys to sit down. And he wants to know what your guys' plans are next. Where do you want to go? What you doing? You filled him in a little with what you guys have done and found, but not everything. So it's pretty much a... So, what's next for you guys? What leads do you want to follow? Where are you headed? Gosh, I that just kind of thing was fine to you. What's, what is next? Yeah, I don't think we thought very far past res their mission was Rescue John. Hmm. Uh, if you guys want to give me a history roll, I can remind you of three other things you've been told and found on your journey here. I know it's been a while. Cool. Nat 20, any. Okay, no one else needs to roll. Annie remembers everything you guys need to fucking do. So, when you first pretty much met them, and you met Professor Artemis, who you know is John Jones in real life, he told you you guys were attacked by a bunch of, uh, well, at least one Warforged, and you heard more Warforged at the army camp in Lulafell has been having issues. You now know what the crystal that Zelda showed you guys is, is a kyber crystal. They are quite rare and quite powerful. You can look into that. You would remember that she said her parents found the one she's currently keeping in the abandoned keep. You also know that's the majority, I think, of what's on your list of things to look for right now. You've also met Arthur the Triton, who gave you a conch shell that when you are ready to sit down and talk about what the hell's going on in the world with all the leaders in Marzell to give that a call underwater. And that all the people from... Allmark are being migrated to Marcel. That's currently what's going on. Other than random demon portals popping up and starting to kill people. I feel like we did talk about going to Lulafell. Or we did stop by Lulafell and talk yeah. to Lois, I think, on the way here. Right. And you also have the demon mirror in Endolin's um, main layer to deal with. When we went to Lulafell, we just talked. We didn't get into the Warforged stuff, right? We left that open. Correct. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, you pretty much decided to come uh, save John first, which was mm -hmm. the better option. <laughs> Do we have any idea geographically what would be the closest to where we are currently? 
Uh, closest would be the abandoned keep. That'll put you on the world map. Mm -hmm. So you guys are currently up here top right in M Maybell. Uh, you would know that you'd have to either somehow try to dock, but you remember going by the abandoned keep, it was high up in the high rise. So you'd have to dock at Hyrie Point and then travel north from there to get the, to the abandoned keep. Uh, Lulafell, that's where you originally got your ship and um, met uh, Clark's brother's blank dog, who gave you a few items. Uh, the army is up in the mountains somewhere. And Luna Castle here is where you know that John and uh, everyone is at Wayne Manor, and they have told you to stop by when you are in that area. And you also know... Oh! Yeah, you also have the portal that you guys found that's in one of your uh, mirror, di uh, mirror portals, and you know it used to be on this now empty hole that is just full of seawater. That's where it current where it was 850 years ago. Well, until the uh, explosion 15 years ago by the uh, volcano erupting that caused most of the damage here. But you guys are currently up here, and all the people from the town are hiding in this mine. John, do you have someone to uh, get word to the city folk and tell them that all is well and they can return? Ah, uh, that will be done momentarily. Don't you worry. Like, literally, as soon as he says that, you hear all the church bells in the city just start to ring. There's the signal. We're good. You see Clark kind of wince every time he hears the bell because of his There's a lot of his uh <laughs> because of his uh superior hearing. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> um then uh I say we just work our way down. Start at the keep and work our way that way. Makes sounds makes more sense to me. Sounds good to me. If that's the closest place, maybe we'll start there. Well, so Thor, you are coming along for the uh, for the adventure. Uh, yeah, I suppose so. Cause, um, well, you're the only people I know, and um, I don't even know you that well, but it's better than nothing. And you gave me weapons, so I, that that puts you right in my book. And yeah, so if if you'll have me, I would love to. I think I could be an asset to your group. And then it shall be. And I'll look at uh, Eddie and, and Ulrich and Hal making sure that they're okay with it too. Okay. Yep, yep. Well, and, John's going to look at everybody and go, well, I've heard rumors about that place. So all I'm going to tell you is be careful. Uh, if you don't know what it is, don't touch it. Figure it out. Um, the army. I remember you guys telling me about the uh, the Warforged issue. Um, oddly, uh, Professor Artemis had contacted one of us and... How do I put this? I sent a group of idiots because they were really the only ones I had at the time there, and I haven't heard from them. Uh, just checking which Artemis. Um. Oh, John. He he he. Like, Out of character. Does he does he know? I believe yes, he does. Yep. 
I think he did tell you guys about that when you first uh, had a chat, chat with him. I do believe correctly. But yes, he would anyway. So, um, yeah. So if you guys do end up uh, looking into that, I sent one of my best with a group of, well, I did tell you guys before that we're, our numbers are dwindling. Someone's been finding some of us and we've lost quite a few. So I've had a couple recruits over the last few years who are okay-ish. This is their first mission, so I sent them with one of my best, because he'd be the best suited for the job. So if you can look in when you hit that area and look into that disturbance, why they haven't contacted me back, that'd be great. Yeah, I think that sounds good. I mean, I, I don't mind looking for some idiots. Yeah, uh, most of them are quite dumb. But... <sighs> They're the best for the job. Uh, he's going to write down some names and descriptions. And the lead one, uh, he's going to show you a picture of. Uh, he's just going to name. He's just going to hand it to you and go, he's a Warforged. I figured he'd be the best. His name's Cyborg. The rest of the idiots, they call themselves the Doom Patrol. Good luck with Why? Them. Because because they're always doomed? Uh, yeah. From the moment they were born, I believe, yeah. Their luck is just terrible. A couple well, of them are pretty good at certain things, but yeah. Cyborg at least knows his shit. But if he's not contacting me, uh, it's not a good sign. Well, then it seems they were aptly named. Um, so, yeah. Yeah, you can I tell suppose. he's not really heartbroken. He just more is irritated the fact that he hasn't heard from them. <laughs> yeah, you can't find good health these days. I mean, I don't know what days these are, but nope. I would assume that still stands. Yeah. Um, and also, Thora, you're probably not really, this has been a weird hour for you. Um, looking back now and maybe on a window, you would realize you're not on a planet. And as you look up into the sky, you see a massive planet right in front of you and two other moons off in the distance. One sun over to the left, and another sun far over to the west. Uh, well, this doesn't seem to be where I parked my ride. So, um, why are there two suns, and also, where the hell are we? Well, I'll, I'll be the first to it. I'm not the best person to answer this. But from what I briefly learnt, you're old. Like, like super old. Like, older than anyone ever coming to this Moon, I'm gonna start flicking through the pages to find my grandma's entry. Mm -hmm. uh, older than, gosh, the, that's the, you, you said the first first migration to the planet. Yeah, so forty four hundred and one years ago. Yeah, so uh, you're probably not from this. I'm from just gesture to planets, to moons, suns, area. Uh, yeah, well, I just want to say, for being as old as I am, I look damn good. And then, also, 
Um, I also want to say, yeah, because I'm pretty sure we didn't have like 30 moons and two suns last time I looked in the sky. So you might be on to something there. I, I imagine we're going to find someone who, who knows. How hard can it be tracking down thousands of years of history? Well, not that hard, I guess. Oh, I don't know. I'm not, not real smart, so. I'm sure once we get to, uh, if we get to Luna Castle, there should be more information. You guys also there. remember as soon as you killed Endelin, uh, you did get a sending from Chester telling you that the um, mind bores, like the, the worms that were inside a few people that you guys found, were gone, and that the Lady Tandron, uh, Archmage Orator, and a few others are finally getting their memories back, and you know them to be quite old also. Oh. Yeah. You would remember Lady Tandron has been here for a long time, and we were told that she originally came through the Fey Portal. Same with um, and Alec and Abigail. Was there any outward signs of this little memory eating thing no that we that we saw the only thing alec really told you um that it really it happened to dr Ma to um, dr magnus quick one moment she was fine and then immediately her memories just started to go she wasn't as magical as the other people were that you know of but you do remember seeing the mural on the wall that she also is quite old. She never came through the Fey portal. She was originally from, from the planet. And she taught there. How she's this old a human, you have no idea. It attacked her first. And it also hit the main magical people in May Marzell. And it should not have been able to A, hit... Abigail, or Lady Tandron, or Archmajor Orator of someone their, someone of their um, nature. Uh, it hit, you would remember them saying that Lady Tandron had three of them in her head. And it's going to take a while for her to gain most of her memories. Because you guys did remember a lot of the things they should have known about. There was something that causing them to forget those memories. And Alec did tell you that they were getting on the mend, but how long that's going to be, hard to tell. All right. John's pretty Are much going to tell you... Going? Yeah, John's going to tell you a lot to kill some time on your journey. Deal with that demon portal first. Before you hit up the abandoned keep. And he'll try and get, he'll tell you he'll try and get another group or at least someone to check in with uh, the patrol at the uh, army camp. Um, and he'll get word back to you, but he's pretty much... He has other things he needs to do, especially with his crew. So do you want to help us with that demon portal? Seems to be your specialty. Well, I can. But I do have other things I need to do. Do you have any words of advice? Dealing with demons, don't agree to anything. 
Don't smile, don't nod. You see one, if it's trying to kill you, kill it first. Should we destroy the portal? I don't know if you can. Certainly try. Well, somebody on the outside, what, what's going on with this demon portal thing? And if we're not supposed to destroy it, or if we can't destroy it, then what are we supposed to do with it? You guys want me to come? I can come, but I figured it'd be... I don't want to... Let's just put it this way. I don't want to travel on the back of your house. I'd rather take a ship. That's understandable, but I just really do we need to mess with a demon portal? I mean, if it has the potential to bring other demons here, isn't that well, the opposite of what we're trying to do? My only... Gendolin went in and out of that a few times. She came out of it with those dolls. So, don't know. Either that or chuck it overboard. But if you want me to go with you, I just figured it'd be a good thing to do on your travels. While your uh, house is moving, we could kill two birds. It's just an option. If you want me to come, I'll come. It'll just delay me. And, and when, when, when he says kill two birds, Clark kind of gives him a side eye. It's a, you know what I mean. Just kill two demons with one stone. What, what, was that better, little buddy? Nudge his head. Well... I say the portal because that way we make sure that at least this one is closed and no more demons may present themselves through it. Yeah. And I honestly don't, I'm not too sure if I want to leave here before I know, before I have one of my guys deal with that machine that we found. I'd like to be here for when he shows up. That makes sense. I also would love to keep this guy with me. And he's going to point to Cargath. I have a job for him. But actually, it'll help you guys out in the long run, too. I need a comms officer, pretty much. He'd be our... You need something, you call him. I can set you guys up with some sending stones once I get some. How do we close a portal? Uh, find, I'm going to assume, what's inside and kill it. Well, sounds simple enough. I never really got anything out of her because, you know, I was being filleted alive. I'm sure we will figure it out, Annie. Call it my first mission for you. One hell of a mission it is. <laughs> One of many, I think, that you guys will be fine at. Well, that sounds like fun. I'm being honest. I mean, I've been stuck in a mirror for thousands of years, apparently, so... I mean, what's a little demon portal? Hmm. Oh, you can see guys. Nice. Cargas a little agitated, and he's just going to... Uh, I don't know what to do, guys. Clark will fly up and, and perch on his shoulder. He'd be all right, big guy. Just help help John out. No, I've been with you guys for a while. Uh, what am I doing, John? Communicating? It's not what I'm good at. John's just going to look at the big guy and go, Huh? Eh? Um, it'll be good for your health. And, well, I have another side mission for you, but I just need you. I just need you. 
Kargas going to him and haw. And... You'll be all right, big guy. Well, I'm not leaving you guys without. Fine, here. Um, Thora. Once I bring up his character sheet. You're going to see this seven and a half foot Goliath walk up to you. Grudgingly, he's going to hand you a very nice sword. A very nice cloak. A weird looking rock. And a javelin. Protect them. I don't need him right now. I'll well, eventually we'll... tell you what he's giving you. <laughs> There's a lot. All right. I'm just transferring uh, his stuff to you. <laughs> uh, well, I I might appreciate it, sir. That's bigger than me. Hmm. Um, I'll take real good care of it for you. I promise. I don't know who you take are, where you go, going, but. Uh, yeah, I, I got this for you. Good. He doesn't have any armor because he doesn't need it. Oh, actually, he's got chainmail. Yep, he can keep his chainmail. That's fine. Uh, so yeah, you're eventually, uh, if you look in D and D Beyond, uh, you can pull up a sword called the Runic Defender. It's a very nice weapon. Uh, you can get yourself a cloak of protection. A javelin of lightning and the stone of good luck. All right, I'll type these all in for you too. Don't worry. And pretty much once John's got his room done, uh, him and Cargath are gonna head out. But Pete, you're gonna get hugs from him first. Cargath, not John. Okay. Anything else you guys want to do? Or say? Before Cargath goes, um, okay. Kerrigan's just going to go over and sit on his foot like a little dog would just kind of sit on your foot and get close to you. And just, if, a, if a panther purrs, you know, some type mm -hmm. of just showing him some affection before he goes and says they were buddies. Nice. Yeah, he's pretty much going to pat the guy, pat him on his head. Go, oh, I'll see you again. Don't worry. Plus, I'll be talking to you guys a lot. Yeah, pretty much once you guys eventually get your sending stone, uh, Kargath is going to be your go-between. So if you need anything from uh, the Lunar League of Justice, you go through him now. If you find something, you call him. He finds something, he'll call you. It's the opposite of don't call us, we'll call you. Oh, <clears> pretty <throat> much. Yeah. It's a good way of keeping him just in case he guest stars. Mm -hmm. Yep. Well, good, good luck, big guy. And uh, hmm. so I assume it's going to be acquisitions. Don't remember the rules. Oh, I'm sure I'll figure it out. As long as they got a nice bus Best of to keep me fed, that's all I care. Best of luck. Hmm. Well, you guys... Hmm. That house is weird. <laughs> He's just going to walk out the door. All right. Um... I'll put you guys. So, I assume eventually you guys move over to where your new house is. He's currently just sitting there, and you see a five-story lighthouse. As you approach, in your heads... Um, 
he's going to ask you again what you want the inside to look like. Because this is going to be your wizard's tower that it is turning into. So you can either come up with a fun description of what you want your rooms and interior to look like. I don't have maps for what you guys want to come up with, but this will be the generic map until I get something that will work as the interior for you. But he's pretty much telling you that while he travels, it's going to look like he's going to make it look like a um, lighthouse, especially when you're like docked somewhere so people don't come and bother it. So it looks like he's, he has the ability to change what it looks like. Do we each get our own room inside? You're each going to get your own floor. Oh. Yep. Five floors. Five people. Um, mm -hmm. I'm assuming these guys, especially Hal, will let you know that the house that they have just met... Um, agreed to be to let you be its tenants but you had to sign a contract that contract will basically if you're his tenant while he is currently near you or you're inside he will keep you protected well where do i sign <laughs> Now, uh, literally, a contract will appear in front of you with a qu uh, with a pen and ink, like quill and ink, and you'll see everybody else's names that are currently on there. Or just takes it. Uh... <laughs> Perfect. That's that's my name. And immediately, you just in in the back of your head, it's just more of a welcome. You are now part of the contract that is the tenant of a five-story Galder's Tower on the back of a dragon turtle. Man, <laughs> that's not what I was expecting when I woke up today. Yep. So yeah, uh, oh. you guys would know that uh, on the ship itself you guys were on, it was like a three to four day journey from where you currently were. Uh, to get to, you're still looking probably a good three day journey at least to get to uh, where you need to dock to go to the abandoned keep, which is why John suggested you deal with the demon purple. If you want, you can still choose not to. It's not going anywhere. So I will leave that up to you guys. What would you like to do? Well, I say we hit the portal because. I'm getting sick of these demons. And if we get rid of the portal, that will lessen the demons. That, that's fair. I, I disagree sorry, with... It's, the... it's a, uh, a mirror, a demon mirror. That's what I'm talking about, sorry. Yep. I disagree with John's thought of chucking it overboard. Get the sense that would anger Arthur and his group. Yeah, I'm I'm worried to mess with it, but I do feel like that's the lesser of the two evils, that just tossing it overboard just leaves it available for anybody to find and use, or who knows, so, yeah, I guess or I'm... I'm doing, right. So we should take care of it. Um, Clark. Actually, who would you talk to? Yeah, you talk to Clark. Clark. As you guys uh, go through your door and see your shiny new home for the first time, in the back of your head, you hear a quick message from... Actually, no, sorry. This would be Annie he'd talk to. The other warlock. Um, yeah. Annie, you get a quick message from John that pretty much says... Heard from Celeste. The tattoos are from an ancient order called the Red Wizards of Thay. Good luck. I'll keep you informed. 
Do I know the context that this came from? Uh, you would remember he was talking to his patron about what all the tattoos you found on all the cultists were. And then he'd get back to one of you guys with what she found out that was in the uh, book of demons that she found, that you guys found, that she's studying. Ah. Uh, yep. I forgot about that part. Yeah, de definitely going to share that with the party. Has anybody ever heard of these red wizards of Thay? Thora, history check, please. You'd be the only one. One sec. Uh, okay, an eight. You would know you've heard the name. It's more of a, for you, would be more of a fairy tale that they are highly, they are like pretty much wizards who deal in necromancy, necromancy and they do like to summon demons. It's pretty much the majority of what you remember about them with an eight. Yeah, they're a fairy tale of necromancy that summons demons or something like that. You know, I just popped out of the mirror, so I'm still a little. Give them more foggy. time, you might remember some more. The uh, portal then. So, far out, <laughs> so this is what you guys, what you see inside this place. Um, you would have seen them bring them out of the house before uh, the dragon turtle emerged. Three large golden mirrors. Uh, they're like nine feet tall, quite a bit wide. Uh, they have them just right now. They're pretty much just hanging up in the main floor. Uh, unless you guys decide where you want them. Um, and you're going to see these guys walk into one of them. Whoa, whoa. Uh, yeah, I just came out of one of them. <laughs> yeah. I, I, ain't, I ain't real keen on just walking around again. I want to dip them. back out since I assume everyone hunted. Because we'll be able to notice if I'm not going in. Yep. Oh, oh. This one's this one's fine. Yeah, that's what they said last time. I assume, and you know, <laughs> thousands of years later, here I am with I'm riding in a turtle house and and you know demon shit. So I don't know. Well, you saw me go in. You saw me come out. It's better than, better than the last one. Maybe. I mean, I don't remember if I went in and came out any other mirrors before, but okay, you know, I was I'll, just stuck. Just, just try putting your hand through that. How it just, just your hand. All right, she's gonna take her hand and just like, like. Feels a little chilly. Move on the it other very side. slowly. Do yeah. I? A little chilly on the other side. Windy. Oh, it's a little windy. I like the wind. <laughs> you jump See, through. perfectly fine. Or walk through. And you find yourself high up on a cliffside. In what looks to be an old, decrepit looking amphitheater. Outdoor amphitheater. You are not where you currently were before. I'll get rid of all the dolls that are here now. And all the extra people that aren't with you anymore. It's not as nice as 
what it looks like here anymore. Uh, I'll see if I can find a picture. Original picture. Uh, also, Annie, uh, while you're coming through, in the back of your... Give me a history roll, please. Or just a straight intelligence. I'll, I'll let you decide. You know of someone you could possibly talk to about the Red Wizards of Thay. Could be why John talked to you first. <laughs> you guys are really horrible. Yeah, it's quite bad. Yeah. Uh, that's what the place now looks like. It was a lot nicer when they first came here. So does, does Ani remember who she can talk to? I do, but... <laughs> yeah. Um, it probably takes you a minute. It's like, it's not instant. Uh, within like five minutes, you'd go, hmm, should I or shouldn't I? I imagine I start to feel kind of coolness around my, like, where my necklace is. Mm. That just kind of like tingles and then I remember. Okay. Um, sure, let's do this now then. All right. You grab your necklace. And it's just more of a an instinct to also grab your staff that you have that has recently changed for you. And from your staff, you see a small snowflake come off of it and get a little bigger for you. I'm going to give you two options to choose from what your Book of Shadows looks like. Ooh, okay. You can choose. I'll put it in Discord here. And this one. Ooh. Or this one. Ooh. They are Is the bottom one shaped like a snowflake? Shaped like a snowflake. It's almost like you put your hand on the back and open the middle part is the book. Okay. And it is covered in snow, and it feels like it is always snowing and covered in snow. You shake it, snow comes off. It's still covered in snow. Yeah, I like the bottom one. Okay, that's what it, that was my favorite, too. <laughs> and the picture I am posting on Discord mm -hmm. is what I am picturing... Clark's lighthouse floor to look like, except Ooh, nice. a lot more trees. That's okay. <laughs> I like that. My level will have trees as well, except snow. <laughs> yeah, I assume Alrix is just a dojo. <laughs> <laughs> so this book appears, the snowflake that comes from the staff becomes the book? Yeah. yeah. Okay. That would definitely ping for me that I can ask, I can ask some questions at some point about the Red yeah. Wizards if they. This would be like a, a quick. I don't have time to talk. Write it down. Mm -hmm. and get back to you later. Yeah. I know you've had it for a while. We just forgot to RP it. <laughs> yeah, I, I actually I thought about that, that the other day. <laughs> I had that image for at least three months. <laughs> we just forgot to get it when you hit the right level. So if I if I write in that about about this, I can some maybe how eventually maybe get a response, maybe or maybe not. Yep. Okay. And some downtime, I'll just consider like a little. Yep. Scribble session. Okay. Cool. Yeah, you would know one of the few people that might know. You've already talked to. Mm-hmm. Okay. Yep. There might be a price, but you never know. So far, you've been pretty good. Okay. Um, so back on the map, you guys would remember that this mirror here went to the uh, abandoned portal, where currently no magic works. Uh, 
This one here, I believe, is busted. The other ones are all busted. But the demon one is back here covered up. Right here. I'll just take the uh, thing off because it is in the back corner. It is covered by a lot of cloth and it is wrapped up nice and tight. Well, Clark will approach and see if he can untie whatever is holding it and get that cover off. Okay. As soon as you do that... Oh, should we try to take a long rest before we try to conquer some demons? I will let you say that before he uncovers it. <laughs> <laughs> it's been it's been quite a while, and I know some of us can maybe use some spells. I could, it'd be nice to have some protection from evil and good charges over here. That can only happen after a long rest. Uh, what's Hal at? Yeah, Hal oh. definitely needs uh, a long rest. He doesn't have many spell slots left. So do we want to take this rest here or go back to... I like to sleep in a bed. There's no beds here. That's how. I mean, it's just straight through a mirror back to our house. Yeah. And get, uh, we could get our, uh, our uh, turtle moving before all the people come back and see it. That uh, would probably be a good idea. Mm -hmm. all right. Okay. All right. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I was waiting for someone to say it, but I don't think I should have been me. <laughs> All right. Uh, so for now, I will just throw you guys on the lighthouse picture. Um, so uh, you guys go back in. Your you can explore all you like in your new lovely new house. Um, your uh, house is going to you do remember that he doesn't have a name he doesn't remember his name it has been so long if you want to give him a name he'd probably be happy about that this this, this thing's name I think he needs a name am I right Ah, that is uh, that is true. He, and we asked, he didn't remember his name. I don't remember my name. See? What, what, do, you, what do you want to be called? I mean, we can give you a name, but is there something you prefer? Because, I mean, it would be rude for us to just assume well, that we should name you. I've just literally been... Well... Landlord, for the while. Well, I don't like that one. Um, I say we call him Dana. Well, all right. Seems Do you like little, that name? Seems a little small and easy to remember. Is that what you want, or do you want something like... You're, the, you're my tenant. It's not up to me. Well, do you want a full name? Like a... Like a first, middle, and last name. Like, if you get in trouble, we can call you all three. Sure. Okay. <laughs> so, Dana? <laughs> what else would you like to call your dragon turtle? Aloysius... How's gonna say the magnificent? Oh, definitely. But you, you, you feel like a Lowell. Yeah, Lowell. 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 Like the, the rest of your Lowell. Lowell. <laughs> You're gonna have to spell it for me. For me, sorry. Okay. Um, give me a second. I'm dyslexic. Yeah, that's okay. I heard roll and lol. Or we could. Dana Thomas Carvey. Thomas. <laughs> Got to keep with the weird theme, you know. I know. 
<laughs> my turtle in up for that turtle. Good. I, I was I thought someone was going to say a Leonardo, Michelangelo, Donatello. I didn't think I was going to get Dana. I went for the more obscure, I guess. <laughs> Laura, perfect, thank you. Oh, yeah. Okay. All right. I think it should be Dana, Laurel, Aloysius. The Magnificent. Dana, Laurel, Aloysius. The Magnificent. D-N-A-D-L-A-D-L-A-T-M. D- yeah. D- okay. Dana Laurel Aloysius the Magnificent I, it is. We'll call you the Laddam for short. <laughs> I think I've been called worse things. Okay. Yeah, I mean, if you're called Landlord, that's already worse <laughs> than the Laddam. <laughs> All right. Dana Laurel Aloysius the Magnificent Dragon Turtle. Beautiful. All right. Um, I think that you, fits. Yeah. So, uh, you guys can have your long rest. Well, I'm assuming you guys are going to put him... Where would you like to drop him off? Well, he's pretty much... While you guys are in the portal, he's going to start moving. So, would you guys like to hit up Hyrie Point, or do you want him to try and land as close as he can to the abandoned keep? Well, I was thinking. Sorry, go. I was thinking if uh, we get, um, if we could get close enough, Clark was going to do a little, um, scouting. He was going to fly off the boat or off the turtle, do a little scouting, look around while everybody else tries to find a way up. Okay. Uh, give me a history roll, please, there, Clark. When Hyrie Point it's... comes up, yeah, please. Sorry. With Son of a bitch. With, with advantage because you're a bard. This is one you okay. can, uh, remember. Yeah. In your background. You guys are nope. horrible. I don't remember shit. Nope. All right. That's fine. Uh, I'm just trying to think of... Uh... Nope. No one else would know. Just you. Okay. Uh. It's something you were told a while ago, I think, in session three. All these lore drops and we keep rolling like crap. Uh, yeah, it's... Uh, it, it, this one had to do with Lois. That's okay. Mom! <laughs> Maybe it'll come to you. You still got a long journey. Okay. All right. So he's going to start swimming. Um, you will realize that as soon as he starts swimming, he's going deep. You guys are underwater and not drowning. But you, outside your windows, you can see underwater. can't tell you're underwater. You can't even tell he's moving. But you can see everything until it goes deep and then it gets dark. That's neat. Yeah. Uh, with 120 feet of dark vision, do I see anything weird out the window uh, while he's swimming? Me... Give me a perception check, please. Come on, you. I'm an owl. Let's do this. <laughs> yes! 18, finally. Uh, 18's <laughs> enough to be able to, as soon as you start going and he starts swimming, you see anchored around the entire cove about 40 ships waiting to come back in. Some of them have started to drift, uh, pull up anchor now that the all clear has been given. But you do see a lot of ships slowly finally coming back in. Underwater cool. wise, yeah. the odd rock, the odd small fish, nothing too, too big out here yet. Okay. Yep. Mm hmm. 
I just realized how close you are to actually Cargath's home, too. Oh, well. Whoa. <laughs> I just realized I got It's like, oh, you guys could have actually went to... All right, oh, well. Not that I have a backstory for him at all. Okay. Well, um, I will put... I'll do that later. I have an actual dragon turtle token for you guys. But we'll just say he's on his way. So you are going to sleep for eight. That'll get you a good part of the way. He's still going to be at least two days before he's in and around here. So you guys can have your long rest, by all means. You will be able to attune to all your items for Thora. You now, I think, have the two best weapons between everybody. <laughs> Uh. Yeah, these guys are fairly good. All right, I need to remember that. Alric, sorry, um, Hal has a dagger of warning. You guys would now know that within 30 feet of Hal, I'm assuming you guys would have, um, over the time, you know, identified all the things you finally have. The only other thing that you guys currently, I believe, you do have the books, remember? I, You guys, I don't think, have had time to identify the books. All the treasure you got from Endolin's lair. Would you like to do that before you go through the portal? And then I can finally tell you what they all are. Yeah, let's cast <laughs> Identify. Okay, let me find that list. Because you, you've grabbed the books, and you've grabbed a few items there. I think I've told you most of it. What session was that, Brandon? One in the past. <laughs> uh, right. Uh, not that one. Yeah. You guys have been in Mar Maybell for quite a while. I think we've done half the campaign in this city so far. Beautiful. I think I found it. Okay, you... Nope, that was the house. Uh, you guys already did that. Okay, so... One of the items is called a talking doll. Uh, if you look up talking doll in d, &D Beyond, I believe it is an actual magic item. So, it's a stuffed doll within five feet of you. You can spend a short rest telling it to say up to six phrases, none of which can be more than six words long. Uh, you can set a condition under which the doll speaks each phrase. You can also replace old with new ones. Whatever the condition, whatever the condition, it must occur within five feet of the doll for it to speak. So basically, you could use this as an alarm to set. Uh, if someone opens a door... You can have it set so whenever someone comes within five feet of it, it starts talking. Uh, you can use this thing for an, a wide variety of things for you. That's white on him. I will write these all down too. Cool. You got a toy spider uh, that provides a single use of spider climb. So basically, uh, this is just write down toys. I'll, I'll write all this out for you. You have a hand puppet. So it's basically like a hand puppet that when you use it can cast minor illusion three times. You got a potion of growth, a spell scroll of speak with plants. You got your ornithopter of flying that Kargath had and we can put in your thing. You also remember you got the scissors of shadow snipping. So you can literally cut somebody's shadow with these scissors. And you now have a shadow minion. That's an actual magic item you can look up. Scissors of shadow snipping. Your books are the Tome of Clear Thought, property of Candlekeep. The Tome of Leadership and Influence, also property of Candlekeep. Uh, 
the de demonomicron of Iggy Wealth that John took. And you were also given a small bubbling pot of black ichor that is called demon skin. It is demonic armor that will attach to your skin. Do I, when I identify these things and specifically this pot of bubbling black ichor, yeah. is this something that I know will attach to our skin and then we can take it back off? Or is this like venom in a pot? It's pretty much venom in a pot, I believe. Let me find that magical item again. The books are legendary. When you read them, uh, they will give you extra fun things. Uh, the magic item appears as a bubbling pot of ichor. When you attune to it, the ichor adheres to and contours to your skin. It's basically um, cursed. Um, the armor can be worn under normal clothes, does not impede bodily functions. Once you put it on, it cannot be removed unless you choose so or die. So you can actually take it off, yes. This one's not the okay. version. So but it can't can... be taken off of you? You have to choose to yeah. take it off? Correct. Okay. And it is heavy armor. No. But it's back, I can't okay. steal your armor. Yeah. Right. Yeah, it is heavy armor. Okay. Yeah. It was originally going to be Kargath who was supposed to put this on, but he didn't. Hey. Dora, you want some fancy heavy armor that can attach to your skin? I don't think you can wear it. I don't think any of you can wear heavy armor, can you? Hal can only do medium. Technically, I think a barbarian can. I think it just gives you disadvantage. You could also sell it. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I, I don't mind the armor, but I tried to be a little sneaky sneak, so I think that might, that might, uh, you know, Does it say you're disadvantage a... me, per se. Yeah. What's it called again? Bubbling what? It's called Demon Skin. I'll send you the D&D &D Beyond link. So basically, um, you can make it plate armor and it becomes 18 AC. Um, oh, actually, this armor does not impose disadvantage on stealth checks. It does require a strength of 15 to equip it, though. Yeah, and you can only use light and medium armor for Thora. I don't think any of you guys can wear it. Kargath was, I think, the intended person for this when I first put it in there. Yeah, I can only go up to medium, so. Yeah. Be a little owl going clunk, 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 flying through the air. Yes. <laughs> I'll put in the scissors for you. Yeah, I think good pin Albert to the floor and tried wearing it. It would just completely envelop a little brownie. Mm. I've, got, I've, got, I've got minus one to strength, so any strength requirement is just no. Yeah, it's not wanting to load, that's fine. But yeah, um, if you research them, I believe it should pop up for you. Um, and yeah, the Tome of Clear Thought and Tome of Leadership and Influence are legendary books. I believe they are a one and done. And then you can't read them again for, I think, 100 years. What did you say about a shadow minion? Uh, if you look up the Scissors of Shadow Snipping. 
Oh, okay. Yeah. Uh, so so the, the, the those go together. Of, okay. Yeah. The Tome of Clear Thought book contains memory and logic exercises, and its words are charged with magic. If you spend 48 hours over a period of six days or fewer studying the book's contents, you gain two intelligence permanently. And then the book loses its magic and regains it in a century. In the Tome of Leadership and Influence, uh, when you read it, you gain plus two charisma permanently. What? What's came... my spellcasting modifier? Is You're that charisma? charisma? <laughs> Yep. You're hey. <laughs> you and um, Clark are charisma based. I uh, actually. Am I? Yeah. Bards are charisma. I thought because of what I took, it changed. Oh, did it change to wisdom? I Wait a minute. First sword bard. I thought it was still wisdom. That means charisma for sword bard. I thought. Uh, uh, it should tell you somewhere. Yeah, that's what I'm... Yeah, Dex and Charisma, I think. So unless Sword Bard goes Dex for your um, spellcasting. Well, that explains why <laughs> my stats are messed up. Maybe. So your spellcasting modifier is dexterity? I think it's still charisma for him. Oh, okay. Yeah. I'm like, that's not um, okay. Well, I, I have a feat that lets me choose. Oh, okay. That might be it. But I think your spells are still charisma based because that's your primary ability for a bard. Is well, it charisma. could have been in whiz or, or char, and I chose. Okay. Charisma. Gotcha. But, yeah, so that messed me. And now I, now I see why I'm... Yeah, okay. <laughs> if, if you need to change it because you screwed it up, I'm okay with that. That's fine. No, 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 no. We'll keep... We'll, we'll, we'll figure it out somehow. <laughs> yeah, beautiful. But, yeah, either way, uh, one book will give you plus two intelligence, one will give you plus two charisma. Yeah. So that is pretty much all you guys found, plus the gold you've already used and all that. So the potion of growth, the spell scroll, pretty much most of the things you just write in, and when you want to use it, you use it. Uh, the tome uh, is an item you can put in your bag. Uh, the demonicron, you don't have anymore. Uh, and yeah, you can figure out what to do with the demon skin. Mm -hmm. And that's where the runic defender came from, too. So yeah, that was what you found in Endolin's lair. Uh, yeah. Um, were you at some point going to write in your book and ask a question about the Red Wizards of Thay before you go through the portal? Or did you want to do that? Oh yeah, that's what I was. I was assuming that I went ahead and wrote it when we were talking okay. about it on the back of the turtle or wherever. Yeah, earlier when we talked about it, I was just gonna scribble down and then just carry on about my day, not expecting an immediate answer. Oh, you're getting an immediate answer. Oh. We will switch down to the secret room. We will be right back, guys. Okay. Well, your first response is pretty much a, uh, it took you long enough to write in that. I thought you would have figured that out a while ago. It took me a while to find it. We've had a lot, a lot going on. Yes. Well, Red Wizards of Thay, how did you find out about them? They should be long dead. Long dead. An old friend recognized, or had an old, an old friend of ours had an old friend of his own that recognized some tattoos that we've seen. We've been battling a lot of 
cultists that we're not sure where they where they came from, who they worship, but they all had these weird tattoos that none of us had ever seen. Weird. Yeah, I assume I, I, I'll speed this up. That you tell them about the uh, the dolls and whatnot. Tell her about the dolls mm -hmm. and fun stuff and fill her in. Yeah. Oh. My my my. Endelin has been busy. So glad she is finally dead. The Red Wizards of Thay are... Well... How do I put this? Quite evil. I did not assume any of them survived. This is... Troubling. Well... Their ruling body comprised of mostly like eight of the most powerful wizards on Toril and among other worlds and places. Their leader was something called a lich. His name was Zastam. Yeah, I'm pretty sure he's dead, I think. Um... But if his minions survived and they trapped themselves in those curious little dolls, they need to be destroyed immediately. No one is allowed to keep them. So whoever gave you this information... Please make sure they're burned to a crisp. And hopefully you found them all. Okay, I'm sorry. This is out of game. I want to clarify. The person that gave us the information about so the John, wizards need to be burned or the dolls need to be burned? You need to tell John to make sure that all the ones that you have taken to the temple immediately need to be slaughtered. All of the dolls need to be destroyed. Yep. Okay. And she doesn't care who's inside of them. Okay. Not destroyed, John. Okay. <laughs> oh, no, no. No. Okay. She, she's basically telling you if someone has put the remaining followers of mm -hmm. Zastam inside these dolls, there's a reason uh, she's also going to tell you that if Zastam or any of his high-ranking members still had parts of him or his phylactery, they could resurrect him. Okay. So, and any dolls we see, we just need to destroy them. After making sure that the original habitants are in there, but even then, she would still rather the doll be gone and completely anyway. Mm -hmm. For the just okay. in case. Mm -hmm. um, she will also give you a very better detailed information about the Red Wizards of Fae, so I will let you Google that. So you can yeah, okay. pretty much learn all you can about the Red Wizards of Fae. This moment for you is going to last a while. In game, this is instant. She's pretty okay. Much, whatever you're writing, she's transferring her thoughts right into you. You just need okay. to be connected to the book. Okay, cool. Okay. Um, yes, the Red Wizards of Fae are not something you guys really want to deal with. Um, if they're involved... Um, going alongside the demons hopefully it's just was Endelin's way of causing havoc you might have to figure that out mm, okay yeah okay right, we'll go back up mm -hmm. okay we are back so um i will let annie decide to inform you guys what she has discovered um in time but i think this is a great place to end and we will start next session inside the demon portal and i will give you guys a quick 
view of what you immediately see as soon as you go through. We won't start here, but this is pretty much what you see. We're going to start off. It's going to be fun. I'll put Thor in here. And next session, I'll tell you now, just because immediately as you guys get sucked into this portal, you see two clerks staring at each other. <laughs>